131 Elliott Street. That's probably 99.4% within the riverfront. Yep. But there's a project going in there. So it's not a, it's not, not a prohibition. No, no, but the regulations say um, within the first 100 feet, no touch. That's what the riverfront standard says. Within the second 100 feet, you can alter 10% of 5,000 square feet. So it severely limits what you can do in 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 200 foot riverfront area if it's a perennial stream. But if it's not a perennial stream, then none of those restrictions apply. So when developers are looking at projects, they need to know, okay, am I going to have to live with it, this, you know, standard or or not? And so I'm thinking the way to do that maybe is to come in with a request for determination that says, look, it shows as a perennial stream. However, we have the evidence in accordance with the regulation. We'd like a determination that it's intermittent so that then when the developer sort of plans his project, he knows what the constraints are and he knows that he either has to deal with the riverfront area or he doesn't. And that can make a big difference in where he locates houses, structures, whatever. So that's, I guess, the I, issue. I, I understand that. And I was probably asking for some reverse engineering, that if there was a plan that, was, that the developer thought would work, and it, it didn't um, infringe upon the riverfront, and I, I don't disagree with what you just said, right. then there's no need to fight the good fight. But again, that's, that's sort of a reverse engineering approach. Right. And I, and I do understand that. But I have no idea. You know, how many lots, how many houses, where they're properly located. If the developer had an idea, uh, or the architect, and said, I want to put it here or there, and it didn't infringe upon the first 100 feet, then it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, but it does make a difference, because in the second, two, in the second you know, the outer repairing area, they used to call it, you're limited. Mm -hmm. You only get 10%. So it's... You know, it severely constrains a developer's ability to know what's buildable and what isn't because of those limitations. So that's why it, it's much like an ANRAD. You know, when the boundary of the wetland is set, then the developer knows, right. okay, he is, you know, so it's the same sort of thought process. Okay, do I, do I have this riverfront area or don't I? Because that makes a difference in how I proceed with the plans. And I'm thinking, I don't know, I think the request for the determination process might be the way to go, but that was a question that I wanted to pose to you, you folks. Okay. Well, you certainly have the right to, to challenge the presumptive perennial stream. Um, and we're open and we'll okay. act in good faith. Okay. Uh, it's a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other way to do it would be to come in with a project. One way, to, one way to find out. Yeah. Right. Right, and bring in the pictures and the photographs. Of, you know, the regs say that if it shows as perennial, you must overcome it by um, four photographs within a calendar year showing the stream dry. So that's the criteria in the regulations. So we would have to come forward with that criteria, and hopefully you would consider that in light of the regulations and issue a finding, but that's... What, what about an issue that I have heard uh, people talk about, and that is... Um, that it runs at certain times of the day because of a, a sort of a uh, release of yeah. water yeah. Uh, into it. So I don't know if it's dry, is it dry all day, or is it certain times of the... Because what I've heard is that at certain times of the day, it runs. That's right. And that does complicate. Well, it does, but if there are certain times of the day when it's dry, then, and you can document that over the period of four days, then that meets the regulations, in my mind. Because if it's dry, it's dry. And if it's wet, it's wet. If it's, if it's wet from noon to midnight, and it's dry from midnight to noon, I don't know what DEP would say about that. I don't have a clue. I think they would look to the regulations and say, look, you've got photographs of it dry. If it dries up, unless, unless you know, the regulations do say that if there is a water withdrawal up, you know, upgradient and or um, a dam that people could manipulate. You know, sometimes you have these sluice boards that people can put in. If that situation exists upstream, then DEP would say, well, you know, anybody can put the sluice boards in and it's dry. But I don't think that's the situation here. 
You know, I so, think we'd do better to have this discussion once you have everything in front of us and once you filed your RDA or whatever. So and that's the process you would recommend? That would make yeah. more sense. Okay. That's really what I was curious about, how best to do that. Yeah. Okay. So what's the scenario, what is the, what is the hydrology that's occurring that would make it run periodically or consistently on a regular basis during the day? That just astounds me. I, I don't have any scientific proof, but I'll, I'll tell you it's more than just a rumor that uh, mm. there is a discharge of water from uh, one of the um, nurseries. Nurseries, right? Oh, so um, it's a so it's a it's a it's a release of water. It's not natural. It's not natural, right? Apparently, it goes through the earth and it comes back up again somewhere else. I don't I, I don't know that it's sheet flow. I don't know where the water is going at the nursery, but that's and again I have no <laughs> objective proof of that. Right. Right. But I've certainly, a lot of people have certainly talked about it. Right, right. That's my understanding, too, that there's a nursery that's located up gradient. They water during the night. Oh, and then it you get It flows the, into the storm drain system, which then at some point enters the creek. So in the morning, it's flowing because the water has made its way down. And it then drains it drains down, up. and then you're done. Right, yeah. right. That's my understanding as well, but I haven't seen it. I don't have any evidence <laughs> okay. of that, but... Right. That being, if that's the case, okay, then we don't have any natural flow. <laughs> right. But, right. That's, that's, that's an artificially induced right. scenario. Right. And it doesn't sound pretty. <laughs> okay. Right. But, that, but that, that's discussion. something that, that you're right, it is worthy of discussion. discussion. And it, it's something that we need to, yep. you know, we need to get some objective facts yeah, as absolutely. to, you know, what not the level of, of discharge is. Yeah. yeah, well, it's not theoretical, but, you know, theory is one thing, but <laughs> so, let me ask rumor you. is a different. <laughs> theoretically. Theoretically. The area above where the discharge occurs into the stream is dry. Well, all I can tell you is the photographs taken at the culvert are dry. I looked at the GIS maps. There's no water supply up there because it goes into the Blue Hills, so it's not a water supply. I've looked for, you know, impoundments or something that would, you know, create a damming situation. There's no evidence of that. Whether there's any flow up there at some point, I haven't walked up the stream bed, but at this culvert, it's dry. Again, I'm not comfortable with this discussion because, again, we well, don't have anyone in the audience who might be, you know, affected by this. It's a oh, it's not, this is not decision making. Right. No, this is information but even only. So, even right. This in is fair. This is fair. Really? Yeah. yeah. Gathering information. information. And they're not. They're not. In, you're not. You're not in front of us asking for a determination no, at this right. time. No. We're, we're so theoretically we're talking about a situation, and they're going to. Pre you're going to present, and we'll have this, okay. a formal discussion later. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's, that's right. the way it's done. Right. That's the way we intend to do it. But I just wanted to sure. talk to you about it. It's like there is, a, there is a conundrum here, so that sounds like a fair way to do it, though. <laughs> yeah. There is. There is. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Kathy, right. for putting me on the agenda. I know it's been a late night and you've done a lot of good work tonight. This is early. This is this early. Is early. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're on a roll. We've got better records. We've got better records. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yep. <laughs> Onward and upward. Um, this one is uh, number nine on the agenda. Is um, or, Oh, thank you. Um, this is an order of conditions extension for Lot 1, Gun Hill Street. And for the benefit of the public, um, we were on Gun Hill Street on Saturday and had an opportunity to look at a Lot 1. And the date of that order of conditions, do you know that one? Offhand? He, he does not fall under the act. He does not? No, he's only asking for a one year extension. Oh, okay. Um, 2000. Yeah, it's in the packet. I think it was 2016. I've got lot three. Hmm. Does anybody, can anybody put their hand on no, lot one? I didn't see one? lot one. I saw lot three. Lot three is in our packet. Yeah. I don't know the lot one in the materials. We have to sign it from to lot one. Let's 
Unless I misplaced it. No, it's something completely different. Oh, it was lot one that I was remembering. Yeah, it was a lot three. Yeah, it was slot one. Here it is. Do you have it? Right here. And that's lot three. That's lot one. Right there. Okay. Got it. And then the next one's my good lot here. Eleven thirty sixteen. And this is, they do fall on What's the basis of not approving the extension? That's a Fletcher's deal. Okay. Okay. Good question. They have to I don't be, mean, they, they, they have to be. I'm just not sure if that's 2008. Right. I mean, it's at our discretion, 2018. I think. Yeah. yeah. Unless there's statutory. On the. I have to look at the full list. You know. Of, oh, okay. Right. Say, four, is yeah. there. So it's four okay. years for the. The issue time date. limit. The issue date. After which you cannot. Right. But under normal circumstances like this, there's no basis for not providing. Yeah. This. Okay, this is lot one. Unless we want to reevaluate it. <laughs> on Gun Hill Street. <laughs> lot one on Gun Hill Street. And uh, the applicant, who is uh, Tom Corcoran, said, Dear Kathy, I'm writing to request that the order of conditions issued for lot one, 135 Gun Hill Street, be extended for one year. The order is due to expire on 11 30 15. I would like to extend until 11.30.16. I expect to begin construction this coming fall. Please let me know if there's anything else you need from me. So he also falls outside of the uh, end date of August of 2012. So just as we indicated to a, a prior applicant, um, this looks like a, 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 a request for a one-year extension. Um, and we did have an opportunity to view the site. Uh, there was a four-lot division. Only three of them were actually within our jurisdiction. Right. But this particular one is in our jurisdiction. Yeah. Um, and I, I see no reason <coughs> not to uh, grant the extension. I think they've, uh, they've gone forward at uh, an appropriate pace, and I think they've done good work that we've seen. Yes, but <coughs> I'll counter that with the discussion that we had on site concerning the, invasive remo the lack of invasive removal mm -hmm. um, and whether or not he's whether or not we should discuss expanding the order of conditions to include invasive removal on the slope, which is the thing that we were talking about on site right. because of the clearing. Yes. Um, I mean, I am all of, I mean, I just asked um, Ingrid about, well, what's the basis of not providing an extension? And I mean, this is pretty straightforward in terms of being fair and appropriate. Mm -hmm. I think that we should, but at the same time, this is an opportunity to mm -hmm. expand on something that we've discussed on site. That's a that's a, a fair comment. But how? What are you talking about? Removal of invasive species? Where? No, no. So we on the site on the building on lot number two, right? That's the one. We, no, three. The one that we just reviewed was lot number three. Right, and the yeah. concern yeah. was the removal of the trees opened up the site for sunlight, opened up the site for rain, and therefore accelerated the growth of the invasives at the perimeter of the um, buildable area, the limit of work. Um, and the concern that we had, or the concern that we have, was that in discussions about the removal of those trees, we may not have fully uh, understood at that time the implication of, of that that additional light and water was going to have on the growth of the invasives. The consequence. Of the consequences, of that, yeah. yeah. So the, the question is, is this an opportunity to expand the order of conditions to include removal of invasives and that gets into a discussion of well how do you do that without destroying the slope mm -hmm. but is that something that we would want to entertain which would mean that we would deny the extension which would be a burden but i think is worth the discussion in terms of with the developer to say this is a condition that we think that we've that he his project has reset our perspective mm -hmm. on this issue mm -hmm. and um and if he is amenable to expanding the removal of invasives. But we need to agree collectively the best, uh, an appropriate way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, he, maybe he would be willing to come in and talk about it. Mm -hmm. because yeah, I, I think he probably would be, because yeah. I, th I think it's a little bit awkward for us mm -hmm. to, to amend it. We have the right to do that, because we have a right to deny the extension. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I think we could modify it, but I believe he should be here. 
I agree, and I and I and I, I on one hand, we have already granted the we've already granted the order of conditions, and I kind of feel that this is a little bit backhanded. But I think um, it ties into but, the whole his whole project, right? Of all those houses, and Ingrid, you know, you weren't there at the site walk, but we saw so clearly that because all of the trees were taken out, and all of a sudden there's bright sunlight there. Plus, he has sprinklers. Of course, he has you know beautiful lawn and the sprinklers going. So all that extra water, the invasives have just blossomed down that slope. They were there what, to like begin what? with. Like what? Cat briar. Um, I can't even remember. There are two or three other ones that are so the bittersweet thick. Thing? Bittersweet is there like crazy. Mm -hmm. The Oriental bittersweet. Mm -hmm. um, and so it does seem as though this is a good time for us as the commission to think about what are the anticipated consequences of this kind of clearing on this kind of a scale. But in fairness to Mr. Corcoran, to talk to him about it, um, and, and I agree with you. I'm not sure that there's a, I'm not sure what the solution is for removal, because yeah. you can't just remove it because you're gonna destabilize the slope. Oh. So you have to remove and to plant and mass. plant. He's gonna get a what? Root mass. You're not gonna get the root mass. You don't want to get the root mass. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that would be further erosion. But, but leaving like the root mass just, just perpetuates. One observation. Um, right. Unless you do cut and paint with the. But does that kill the root mass? No. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it does over time. It well, you does chemically over time. kill it. Yeah, you don't want to do use that. Too then much what of holds that. what holds the slope? That's well, you have to that's replant right. within that's that. That's but if you thing. replant and you've got you know ten gallons of Roundup or napalm or whatever, whatever, <laughs> going to get the root mass out, how does something then grow? Well, I think what we need is some expert advice. Maybe we should have someone come in, uh, you know, to talk to us about what would be the best practices right now in terms of how to replant a slope like that. Well, how to, how to clear control invasives? What's, and the, what's the greatest the slope? Is it? Is it? It's extreme. It's extreme. It's, it's very extreme. Really? Yeah. It. It would seem that this might be, at least to me, and I could be wrong, again. <laughs> that it would be good to look at this after the fill. That we walked up as we moved. As I was at the peak and looking down at the invasives, I didn't see. Uh, and it could be my eyes, a major difference between the invasives that were at the bottom of that fill and the invasives that we saw on the other lot. What do you mean? Similar. In terms of magnitude, density. size, density, etc. Um, they seemed at least, but that was at a greater distance, they seemed equally, almost equally I know what you mean. Oh, it didn't clear. seem as all the, tree, all the trees have come down. Yeah, so they've already cleared the site. I water. understand. Yeah, but there's not this infusion of water that you get on the next lawn. I mean, that that irrigation is pretty aggressive. Yeah, but what irrigation is he going to put in lot one? That's that would be a question. So, so I think in fairness, it would be good to have um, Tom, Tom Cochran, Cochran come in front of us, oh, and he could that. maybe he could um, suggest a way of dealing with this because if we're asking for it, I bet other. Commissions are, are dealing with the two to see what should we be doing in the future for this type of development. So, in a way, he should know as well that he might be asked to do this more and more. So, um, I'm, I think we should give him the extension with modification and give him an it's opportunity a to all speak. Those rocks that we saw. What's that? <laughs> it's a good rock. Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can pull the rocks down the slope. <laughs> yeah, right. Line the stream. <laughs> The rock farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you want to table this until September 15th? Yes. That, and that doesn't put him under the gun, does it? I mean, it no, doesn't. I don't it, think he's so. not. You said no, his, his, his date is uh, 11. 11 30, 15. And I think he knows by you know open discussion that so I'm, I'm very much in favor of giving him the extension. Okay. We just okay. need to deal with this issue. Okay. But let him know beforehand. Yes. What our thoughts, our conversation is going what to be about, concern, so that yes. he's not surprised when he comes in. Right. right. Kathy, right. can you talk to him? Yes, I will. Oh, yes. Thank you. He, is, he is won't that, be surprised. He might not like it, but. Well, your feeling is that that's not that that's appropriate. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so. I, 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 I I'm, a, I'm not uncomfortable with that because we don't have to extend it.
and right. you know we could request a, a new notice of intent, but that would be that just form of substance. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I, I think that most of the time we can work out a uh, sort of a compromise right. where everybody walks away happy and everyone declares victory. Right. That's the that's the idea, that's the and I, I think there's a, a path of least resistance here that we can take and okay. work with him. Must be a precedence in the abutting property. We what? We have precedent in how we've treated the abutting property. Correct. Or how far we didn't go. Yeah. And how far we how far didn't, we didn't go. go. Right. 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 Yeah, we, we really couldn't change that. Quarter After the fact. After yeah. the fact. He didn't need an extension. Um, and I'm not trying to use a technical, it's not a default, but a technical issue as leverage. But I think that just as he agreed, he didn't have to agree to the the six shrubs that yeah, he, he did. Because it's not part of our order of conditions, but he did. Right. And he can live with it, and it, maybe we can come up with something similarly acceptable. Right. So, we'll remain user friendly. Yes. All, right. All right, any other thoughts on this one other than continuing it until September 15th? All right, and then Kathy, I'll talk to him. And Yes, I will. And, and convey the sentiment that yes. we're not trying to make him jump through hoops. We're honestly trying to work out a, a better mechanism for maintaining that slope. Okay. Um, all right. Next on the agenda is, that was number... Uh, Seven. Uh, depends on which agenda you're oh, looking at. Yeah. <laughs> there are yeah. two. <laughs> okay. yeah, I think it's nine. <laughs> so ten is order of conditions extension at Houghton's Pond. Um, and there's no one here for that extension. That's the aquatic control. And uh, I, I tip my hat to Kathy because she actually did some, some good work um, on in looking at this. This is the aquatic control. Did they ever do that? They did. Okay. And it's, it's a program. And my first question was when we issued the order of conditions, I don't know, three years ago, um, was it for one application of the herbicide that they put into the water to get mm. the algae out of it? Right. Um, or was it a program, and, and Kathy looked at it and said, it's a program oh. for that period of time. Oh. They are now looking for an extension under the same Extension Act. They do fit within the date parameters, but they do not fit within the um, DEP guidance, which is, uh, it suggests, this is part of the frequently asked questions okay. that uh, Lenore White just talked about. Sure. Uh, it's in there as well, and I'll show you the section. Um, and it says that the Extension Act is designed for buildings and structures. Oh, no, and uh, no. I'll, I'll read to you, and this is the oh. uh, Department of Environmental Protection, Mass DEP Q&A on the Permit Extension Act, which is uh, Section 173 of Chapter 240 of the Act of 2010, amended um, Chapter 238 of the Act of 2012. And this is the one that's effective for permits through August of 2012. So it does fit within the time parameters, but it says, here's the question, aquatic nuisance control. The question is, does the act apply to aquatic nuisance control licenses and superseding orders of conditions for aquatic nuisance control? The answer is no. Oh. Although these concern, these concern the use of real property, they are not directly related to the use of buildings and structures on real property. In accordance with the November 10, I'm sorry, November 2010, frequently asked questions issued by the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. Now, I recognize that I referenced the 2010 Act, but this is part of the issuance for both 2010 and 2012. So DEP guidance suggests that the Extension Act is not applicable to aquatic control. Um, there, there are two ways they could do it. They could file another one, or they could come in and ask for a one-year extension. The program goes until 2016. Anyway. Anyway, so it went from 2012 to 2016. It's and they're looking for an extension to go? Under the Act for another four years. But they for don't now. apply for the Act. They thought they were going no, to get it's automatic. automatic. Yeah. It, it's automatic. If it, applies, it, right it, 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 it applies. It says right there. It does not apply. It doesn't apply. If it so applies, it's automatic. Okay, they, but it, it doesn't apply. So they're, they're thinking or, it does apply, and they're mistaken. Correct. Okay. okay. So I guess my, my concern is that I'm not opposed to the extension, but I want them to come in and tell us how effective it's been. I feel the same way. I, exactly. I'm not opposed. If they come in and they tell us it's been effective, and, and I'm not opposed to it at all, and we'll give them the extension. But right now, I don't have any information to. I don't. Will want to approve something that, that isn't effective. Yeah. Good point. Okay. And now they're, they're in existence until, that is the permits in existence until when? I know you said 16, but the, 
Does that include the summer months? Yes, it, it, the program goes to 2016. Okay. I, I don't have the dates there when it was issued, but they are. Um, yeah, but they can come in. 12, but Hillsides. They, they can come in at their convenience between now and then. You, it was issued 5-15-2012. Uh, so that'll go until 5-15-2016. Right. All right, so it's actually before the summer. That's probably when they do it anyway. But um, why don't we give them notification to come in and <coughs> tell us, just as Mike Thank suggested. You. Tell them we don't think it's um, the Extension Act is applicable to them according to the DEP guidance. And, and secondly, that we'd be interested to find out the effectiveness of what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. And put them on for, if they'd, if they'd be willing to come in on December, I'm sorry, September 15th. Would you think they would want to come? They can come later if they, they want. want. They can yeah. come anytime. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they would just need to file an extension like Anybody normally. Else? Tom yeah. Hawkins, and we'd like to extend it for. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll let know that. Thanks. Okay. Now, why, why do I not see Houghton, Houghton's Pond? That's number 10. We've got, we've got different ones here. Fletcher Steel right. Way. Fletcher Steel Way. How did that get dropped on the second? That's the eighth. Did we the already okay that on the site law? It was no, one of the we didn't do the site law. Oh, yeah. that's right, we didn't Well, go. you just have to prove they do fall under the They act. fall under the automatic. All right, so that's an automatic Very extension. Automatic. Okay. But green. they did do the courtesy of filing with us. To okay. And then Green Mountain Realty? Green Mountain Realty was on the agenda for uh, no, hold on. Saturday. Hold on. Let's finish uh, Fetch a Steel Way. So they have the automatic extension. We're done. Okay. Right, so we don't that's, need to vote I'm on sorry, that automatically. On. We don't need to correct. vote. Very good. Okay. That's correct. So, um, Green Mountain Realty. Green Mountain Realty uh, was on the agenda on uh, Saturday, and we discussed it, and uh, our, the consensus was that they have a, a, a right to a permit per the uh, District Court <coughs> of the United States, Judge Raya Sobel has right. basically ordered us to, to sign the, the permit which we did do, and the applicant came back, which is Green Mountain Realty, they came back and said, listen, we need to change the order of conditions. The reason is uh, we have to put, per Mass Highway, we have to put down a temporary staging area, which is going to increase the amount of temporary alterations. Mm -hmm. And it actually skyrockets, it goes up to 6,000 square feet, which initially seemed like a, a significant uh, change and under normal circumstances, you know, without a federal court order, uh, we would ask for. Well, we'd have to make a decision. Nope, sorry. We'd have to make a decision as to whether or not it's a significant change, which would require a new notice of intent, or an insignificant change, which would allow a revision or modification of the order conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so I talked to, not their wetland scientist, but their real estate advisor, uh, Peter Cook, and I asked him to explain it, and he's now explained it in the email that we received. And essentially, is it's a net benefit to us, because although it, it, it spikes in terms of temporary alteration, it actually, uh, when remediated, that is, when the gravel is removed, it's going to be reseeded uh, with a wetlands mix, and we've asked for a wetland mix. I mean, yeah, a wetland mix mm -hmm. that we discussed on Saturday. I talked to Peter um, Cook today, and he said that should not be a problem. Um, so we actually have a reduction um, in the permanently altered land, and the, the footprint for the tower because it's 120 instead of 140, is actually smaller. And initially, back in 2009, we had 109 square feet of permanently altered wetlands. Not buffer zone, but wetlands. Mm -hmm. That's been removed, so there are no, there's no um, impingement upon the wetlands now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they pull that back, and then there's a reduction in permanent alteration, although an increase in temporary alteration. And then further, they're putting in a plunge pool 
which will allow us to have a, a better quality of water that's being discharged ultimately. So I, I think it's a net benefit. Totally. Yeah. It almost sounds like an alternative analysis that you've been looking for all this time. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like, well, on the other hand, we could do this. You know. yeah, why didn't we do that before? No. Quick, quick yeah. question. So the 6,000 square feet of temporary staging area that they're putting in is outside of the wetland. No, it's inside. Okay. okay. It's inside. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it, it's in the riverfront area. It's not in the wetland. It's in the riverfront area, but sorry. it's not in the wetland, right? Correct. Nothing is in the wetland. Correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. What, where I was going was if do we need do they need to put down a, a structural fabric before they put the gravel down to facilitate the removal of the gravel without destroying the site? I, legitimate question. I don't know the answer. Okay. I, I did not ask that. Okay. Well, that would be the only question I have. I mean, everything sounds like it's to our benefit. And then my only question is making sure that when they remove the gravel, they don't pretty much destroy everything. And if they put down a fabric first, then they should be able to use the fabric to remove in helping them remove the gravel. It sounds like it would be a, an easier remediation yeah. technique. Could you speak to Peter Cook about that, John? I will. To see. Right. Yeah. I will. And so that the, the public is aware, we are under a federal court order. And the order says basically, you shall have no hearings, no discussion. You shall sign the order. Yeah. Uh, but in, in uh, deference to the state law. Thank you, Judge Ovell. <laughs> deference to the state law that requires open and public meetings. So we got a hearing anyway. Uh, and then sign the order. <laughs> so are you going to substitute the page or are you going to re-sign it? Um, I, uh, I think we should re-sign it. Okay. All right. And the substituted page will reflect the new plans that have been given to, uh, to Kathy uh, by Peter. And that, we, that does show the plunge pool, uh, the fact that it's, there's no impingement on the wetlands mm -hmm. itself. Um, and it shows the temporary staging area. And then uh, Peter said that he'd talk to his biology guy today and get the, the wetland seed. He didn't see a problem with the wetland seed. Okay. So Kathy, would you make sure that goes into the revised order, the new yes. page? Perfect. Any other comments or suggestions? To the extent, I guess it does require a vote. So, it doesn't. while we're reissuing, what we're finding is it would be a motion to um, approve this as a revised order of conditions. So essentially we're saying it's insignificant. You may not look at it in terms of numbers, but in net result and net benefit, it, it, it's, it's actually I, insignificant. I thought you want to view it as a minor modification. It is. Yeah. Rather an amendment. Correct. You are correct. That it is a minor modification because the minor modification is the, the term of art that eliminates the second notice of intent. It's a good thing Kathy's here to keep it us. <laughs> are we allowed to vote no? I don't think we are. <laughs> See you in jail. <laughs> yeah, you're cool. Contemporary. <laughs> Yes. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> so the motion should be to allow a minor modification uh, to allow this uh, temporary staging area and plunge pool and removal of any impingement on the wetlands. I don't think we should use the term allow. We should <laughs> say, you know, we support or something. Otherwise, the judge might yell at us, you know. <laughs> Uh, you uh, said allow it. We will agree. Motion to agree. Motion to agree. We agree. All right. Motion made. Yes. Uh, so Seconded. So Done. All Done. right. All in favor. Done. Okay. All opposed. Okay. I was laughing. Is that turned off? No. Oh, no. Oh. It's not turned off. Now, do we have any other additional business? No. That's it. No. That's it. All right. Oh, other than if you want to discuss the letter from Paul. Oh yeah. Such a nice letter. Remember. The, the young man who had thrown the trash in oh, the uh, right. Rutland area. So this is his second letter that we asked him to send in. Uh, and now he's really... The one who said my little brother did it? Yes, but this, <laughs> is, this, is, <laughs> this is the little brother who... This is the little brother. Now, oh, okay. <laughs> now he's talking about reducing his carbon footprint 
and, and being involved in awareness of ecology and building a compost pile in his backyard. And Perfect. I think we've ignited um, sort of yeah. passion here. Passion, <laughs> passion it's, it's for conservation. I love so it. <laughs> we may think about doing this a little bit more. You, know, oh, you want to recruit him for one people. of the vacancies? <laughs> <laughs> Clear up the back of Winter Valley. Yeah, there you go. Okay. That's so, good. That's it. Anything okay. else it? Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn? To move. All in favor? Aye. Adjourned.